All right, everybody, we have something very easy to do today uh, here at the Crooked Creek Mining Company. This is another one of those assets from uh, Kitbash. Anyways, we need to get up high here. So we're going to jump here. There we go. We're up in here. Workers only, by the way. So we'll come into here and you can see it's just an abandoned hall. But there's a switch here to turn the lights on. So we're going to turn the lights on. You can see the lights turn on. We now have lights that are lighting up the room, then we can turn them off as well. And watch the switch as well. See the switch turns on and off. So that's pretty cool. And off they go. We'll turn them on again. And off. You see how they turn on and off with some timing. So we're going to do that. It's actually a pretty easy effect. Not very difficult at all. OK, we are inside of UEFN. As usual, we've got our two spawners right here. We've got our building here, which is pretty cool. And then inside, we've got a switch on the wall and a bunch of lights. And then over here, we have an audio device for each set of lights. And I'll show you what those lights are in a second. Audio device here, audio device there and there. And these each play just a sound that sounds like the lights are turning off, like they're really big sounds in sort of a hollow area. It's this sound right here. So it's kind of cool. It, you can do whatever you want here, but I want a little bit more ambience to this. Now, all of these lights are what's called a customizable light device, and you can set it up pretty interestingly. So we go into the devices in the content browser and we just type light. Then you can see here we have a customizable light. Now, for the customizable lights that I have in here, I've set them all to be slightly yellow. They are not on, so the initial state is off. I've set them to be 100. If we turn this light on really quickly, we can see what it looks like. And you can see it is a spotlight. And we can also do a point light, but that lights up a big, huge area and it doesn't really represent what I want this to look like. So I used spotlights. I set the light size to 50. You can set it bigger and it makes it, you know, sort of much brighter, stuff like that. Definitely encourage you to check out the devices. This is just one of them. We can cast some shadows. You can see here on this post that the shadow will show up, but it won't really show up in performance mode if you're running in performance mode, but otherwise it will. But to reduce the amount of computation, I just turn them off. It's not that important for this. We also have the rhythm preset and the rhythm time. Inside of here, you can set certain things to do with this light. I just want it to be constantly on, so I've left it at that. And then the dimming amount, if you were to set it to dim, because you can do that with verse, and the dimming amount of time. Uh, but we don't worry about this. We're not using those at all. So there are eight lights in here. There's two here, two over here, two here, and two at the very end. This is our light manager device. We made a custom verse device. And then as I said, there's a switch here, but there's also an on switch, which is representative of the on state. And I've kind of hidden that underground, but let's bring it up. Let's bring it up to 800. And you can see, if we hide the other one, we can see the on switch looks like this. Now I've done button tutorials in the past where we change the mesh based on uh, what's happening. But in this case, I'm just using two buttons and I'm just hiding one. Uh, when I don't need it. So that's what we're doing there. So I put it at minus 2000, but I do that in the code. So we're going to take a look at that later. Let's show that button again. So that's the off and the other one's the on. So there's two buttons. And that's it. Other than this verse device here, if you've never made a verse device, there is a link in the description below. But essentially, we would go into the verse explorer, right click, add new verse file to project, put in the name that we want it to be, hit create, and then that gives you another item inside of here. If we double click this, this should open up our file that we've created. And in this case, I've already created it. So we're just going to go over how it is done. So now that we are inside of verse, let's take a look at this. It's our lights manager. I've added in the spatial math because I need to do some stuff with math and you need this library in here. So you have to put that in. And then I've got my eight lights in here. These are all customizable light devices. This is how you access them with Verse. And then we have our four audio devices that we turn on as well when the lights turn on. And there are two buttons, button on and button off. Now we have some logic here going on. We've got the lights are on or not, and that's false or true. So lights are on by default is false because they're not on. We also want to remember if we're changing the light state. So we don't want to do anything if we're changing the light state. We just want to do nothing. 
I'm going to wait. And then we have an off state and an on state for constants because we want to tell our function to turn the lights on or off. And this is how we are going to do that. Okay, in our on begin, which runs right away when the game starts, we are going to set up our subscribers for our buttons on and off. And they are going to call the same function on light button click. Turn lights on is where everything happens. But let's take a look at the on light button click. It gets an agent from the button. So you have to accept that in there. It doesn't gonna pass anything back, just void. And we want to check to see if we're changing the light state. We're changing the light state when we start messing around with all this stuff in here. And uh, we want to detect if that's happening. If it's not, then see if the lights are on. If they're not on, then turn them on. So we're going to call turn lights on and we're going to pass in this on state. So that's the state we want the lights to be on. And then we'll pass in off if the lights are on. So if they're on equals false, then they're not on, right? So the opposite means we're going to turn them off. So that's how the but this is. So this is the function that the button calls. And then this calls this other one here called turn lights on. It's a suspense. We spawn it. So we're going to have some kind of time delay in it, which we have down here with a sleep 0.5 in between each set of lights an audio device. Now the customizable light device takes a turn off and a turn on method to be called on it when you want to turn the lights on and off. Very handy. And of course, the audio player device just has the play method that you can call to make the sound play. The only other thing that's kind of special in here, um, and this is this is just sort of this is just sort of a creative way to do this where I'm turning them on and off one set at a time and I sleep for half a second in between. It's just something you don't have to do that. You could just have them all turn on at the same time or just whatever you want. But to move the buttons around, we're going to teleport them. To teleport a light, you have to make it, uh, you have to put it in an if statement because teleport to can fail. So essentially this will pass back a true or false, but you just wrap it in an if or an option and uh, and then you say, hey, go here. And this is a vector three. So this is where our math comes in. And we're going to put it at this position here, which in the scene is right here. And we get that from the details panel on the right hand side there on the location. In fact, you can right click this, hit copy, go back to your verse file and then just paste this in. So you have the reference of where uh, you have your button or whatever it is you're going to use. Just delete that. So that's what goes in here in this vector three. And then we just use the same rotation that it is. So I'll just get the button off, get transform and rotation. That's how we grab the rotation of that particular object. So we're going to bring the off button up in the case that the lights are in the off, are going to the off state and the button on goes to minus 2000. So essentially, I'm just hiding it underneath the landscape where nobody can see it or get to it. And the same goes for the other way. The only other kind of tricky little thing is that I turn the lights on from the back to the front here. So one, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, eight. And then I do that backwards for turning them off. So it just made sense when I was messing around with this. So hopefully that's been a bit interesting, just um, a little bit of verse code and a little bit of uh, introduction to a light, uh, to the customizable light device, and also how you might mess around with buttons, because this is just the button device, but we're using a special mesh in it. If you see down inside of the details panel, we can use a custom mesh. And inside of here, there are a bunch of meshes that you can use, or you can bring in your own. Now I did a different tutorial on this, but this is just another way to do it. So. Hopefully that has been interesting. If you have any questions, let me know anytime and I'll see you guys in the next one.